It might come as a surprise that the most expensive piece of art in the world isn't the most famous, though they were both crafted by Leonardo da Vinci. Let's start with the one you've surely heard of, the Mona Lisa. About 10 million people gather to see it each year, curious about her intriguing smile. But it was another of his paintings, Salvador Mundi, that took the record for the most expensive art piece ever sold – $450 million at a Christie's auction. The buyer was a Middle Eastern prince who decided to discreetly snatch this painting back in 2017, probably because it's controversial. For starters, some experts have their doubts about whether da Vinci really painted it. They say it doesn't quite match the famous painter's usual style. Now, this doesn't mean that the Mona Lisa is cheaper. In fact, it's considered priceless. Some have said it might be worth over a billion dollars, but it's hard to make an estimate. Plus, the Louvre Museum, where it's currently displayed, would never let it go. They get loads of visitors each year, and most of them are there to see the Mona Lisa. So, eventually, they make way more money from all those visitors than they would ever make from one payment. They've even gone as far as skipping the high insurance costs of the painting. The strategy is to invest in preserving the artwork. In case it ever gets damaged, no amount of money could replace it anyways. Now, you may wonder, what makes art so valuable? It depends on who you ask. But there are some factors to consider when assessing the value of, say, a painting. Like its age, condition, popularity of the artist, or its backstory. Take the Mona Lisa. It used to be considered a mundane painting up until the 19th century. The fact that it was stolen from the Louvre at one point also added to its mystery and value. When you add the fact that Picasso himself was also called in for questioning regarding the painting's whereabouts, it's easy to understand why Mona Lisa gained so much popularity. The most expensive contemporary painting, however, was sold for a bit over $20 million. It's by a Dutch-American artist who crafted Interchange, this abstract landscape, back in 1955. The artwork features a large pink area that's supposed to look like a lady lying down. There are also splashes of blue, yellow, and orange outlining the woman. By looking at these two paintings, the Mona Lisa and Interchange, we see obvious differences when it comes to style. Older paintings were more about a realistic look, making you feel like you got nature itself trapped on the canvas. Artists were good at classic techniques, like mastering the perspective and anatomy of characters. On the other hand, contemporary art is freer, combining different techniques. A good example is abstract painting, like the work of Picasso, for instance, which looks nothing like our reality. He's the pioneer of an art movement called Cubism. Imagine painting like you're making a puzzle with shapes and colors. You may have a face in the artwork somewhere, but instead of eyes, nose, and mouth in their usual places, they're scattered like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. It's as if you're seeing different sides of a person all at once. Even the subject matter is now different. Older paintings show us things from history or representations of well-known myths. Meanwhile, contemporary art touches other subjects too, like social issues or first-hand experiences. Take Frida Kahlo, for example. She's famous for her autobiographical paintings, where she shared with the world different struggles from her life. In fact, she started painting when she was a teenager, after a bus accident left her with serious injuries. Confined to bed, she used a mirror that was placed above her to capture her own image, expressing her pain and emotions through vibrant colors and surreal self-portraits. Back when da Vinci was painting his artworks, it was the rich who were mostly influencing artists. Most of the time, people with means would commission paintings to send out a clear message or simply out of vanity. Contemporary artists can paint whatever they want. The problem is gathering an audience and selling your pieces. And it's not just the paintings that have changed over the years. If you're a fan of sculptures, you might have noticed a difference too. Take sculptures made in ancient Greece and Egypt. Sculptors back then were focused on perfection and ideal proportions. They also used materials like marble and bronze and crafted their pieces through carving and casting. Today's sculptors have a larger variety of materials – plastic, fiberglass, resin, you name it. If you're feeling creative, you can try all sorts of different art challenges at home, too. 
Browse through some YouTube videos featuring art challenges to find ideas. And while you're at it, be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. After that, you can try making cardboard sculptures, castles using just some sand you found at the beach, and even miniature statues using magnets. Also, why not use Legos? Although to top the current record for the biggest Lego sculpture, you'll need more than 5 million of those tiny pieces. The artwork depicted a replica of the Tower Bridge and was over 42 feet high. What about music? It's one of the oldest ways of artistic expression. Archaeologists found ancient bone flutes that were over 40,000 years old. In ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome, for example, music was popular, often used in important ceremonies. Back then, they used instruments like lyres, harps, and pan flutes. During the Baroque era, composers like Mm -hmm. Bach were the equivalent of pop idols. And for good reason, since their music is still famous today. Bach, for instance, still has millions of monthly listeners on popular streaming platforms, centuries after his passing. The 20th century brought music you're a bit more familiar with, like jazz, blues, rock and roll, hip-hop, and electronic. But unlike paintings, where the older it is, the more expensive a piece of art can get, when it comes to music, things are a bit more complicated. Figuring out the greatest song of all time is hard, especially since we don't have a lot of data from previous centuries. Rolling Stones magazine claims Aretha Franklin's song, Respect, should take the crown. But not everyone Mm -hmm. agrees. The most recorded song in history? Some might say The Beatles' Yesterday, with 4,000 versions, or 6,600 recordings of Amazing Grace. But both of those pale in comparison to a tune by George Gershwin called Summertime, recorded over 67,000 times. These days, you can use artificial intelligence to create music yourself. And here's how this software works. Most of it relies on deep learning. This teaches the computer to compose music by showing it loads of tunes that already exist. The computer then figures out the patterns and structures in the information provided. After that, it starts putting out brand new compositions. Once these AI music makers have had enough training, you can give them all sorts of info to make music, like tempo, key, and genre. Now, literature isn't what it used to be either. Ancient Greeks, for instance, used hexameters, a kind of poetic tempo. It was during this time that the legendary Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Greeks also invented drama, as in the theatrical (laughs) genre. They started this tradition in Athens around the 6th century BCE. Even back then, such performances had exquisite costumes, dances, and amazing stage setups. Contemporary literature includes stuff that's been written after the 1950s. A lot of interesting techniques have been used in novels ever since, like stories that jump around in time and characters you don't know if you can trust. Authors today are also not afraid to break the fourth wall by directly addressing the reader. When it comes to the best-selling book of all time, things get a bit complicated to estimate as well. But for most people, their best guess is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Some reports claim it's been sold over 200 million times all over the world. Not to mention it was translated in over 100 languages. Hey, read all about it! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.